to round four of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of June 3rd. I'm Nicole Erdix, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hello. And Terry Morrow. Hello. As moms of teens and young adults, we've survived those little kid days, yet we're still rethinking the decisions we've made all through our kids' lives and worrying about what's going on right now. Today is Thursday, which means it's time to give in to our obsessing about parenting details, big and small. And today's obsession is tattling, but not by kids, (laughs) on kids, by us, the adults. (laughs) Yes. Well, I think what prompted this discussion was Catherine and I had uh, similar scenarios a little while back that involved us as the adults deciding on whether or not to rat these kids out <laughs> right <laughs> to their parents so mine specifically um my daughter's at an age now where you know she's allowed to do certain things and unfortunately her some of her friends are not <laughs> mm-hmm. so my daughter and her friends decided to do something while I was out of town so I didn't necessarily condone this activity uh mm-hmm. huh Um, And then I found out about it after, and then I found out that one of my daughter's friends didn't necessarily tell her parents Uh. or give her parents the entire picture of what happened (laughs) or what they were up to, (laughs) because apparently I was at home when this activity happened, but I really wasn't. Uh Yeah. You know, and the girl is at an age where she's an adult and should be telling her parents these things too or whatever, trying to figure out a way to not get me involved. (laughs) (laughs) Why does it have to come to you? I know. And then, and so the day after we get back, the mom calls me up out of the blue, which she rarely does, and said, let's go for coffee. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) So that was a little, thankfully, it the, the topic did not come up. <sighs> just a coincidence. And, and, I, and I just kind of, you know, did not have to discuss it. I didn't have to lie to her. I didn't have to leave any details out. But let me tell you, it was pretty stressful. It was a stressful meal. You couldn't yeah. enjoy your food. Yeah. Your food. <laughs> it was not relaxing. I was on my toes. <laughs> and then, And part of me was like, do you really think that your kid is, you know, (sighs) that's the other part of me too. I was thinking, do you really know what your kid's up to? (laughs) Do you feel like disloyal to the parenting brotherhood for not saying anything? No, I empathize with the kid. Okay. (laughs) I feel more, I don't know, maybe it's because the way I was brought up, but I'm like, give the kid a break. But if you found out that your kid did something that was outside your particular parameters of comfort and another parent knew about it, would you be mad at them? I, I think I would, I don't think I would, I would like to hear from my daughter. I wouldn't want to hear it from the parent. And also you don't necessarily know, right? I mean, in this case, Nicole did know um, how that parent felt, but somebody might you know, like if someone came to me and said, you know, your kid was doing this. And what if I was like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> She's yeah. 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 I, I had a situation like this once and I handled it so badly. And if I could just go back in time and shut my mouth, I would do that. But we had a, a young friend who I know her mother specifically, and for some good reasons, did not want her to be on Facebook. And it came to my attention that she was indeed on Facebook, but the mom wasn't on social media at all. So the mom had no idea. And so I told the kid, I said, if you don't tell your mom that you're on Facebook, I'm going to tell your mom and that's going to be worse. And the kid did tell her and the mom was upset, but she was glad that her daughter had told her. And then I said something that made it clear that the daughter had only done it because I said so. Uh, and then everything fell uh, apart. The kid hates my guts. And the mom is so upset and disappointed. And I'm like, oh, you were so close. You were so <laughs> close to doing you a good thing. You almost pulled it off. Just <laughs> shut oh. up. I just couldn't wow. keep from taking a little victory lap. <laughs> <sighs> stupid, it's stupid, hard. stupid. It's but that's, so if you can do that sometimes, that's the way is to tell the kid, you know, your parent needs to know this, but it needs to come from you. Don't make it come from me, you know? Well, and I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I've been in similar situations with my son's friends where they've put themselves in a situation and I've just said, you know, 
it's your responsibility to deal with it, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, and I, you know, I've, but it was, you know, not a Facebook thing, but it's been like, okay, I'm not dealing with this. You are. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I kind of, but then they, they knew that that's what was yeah. going to happen. But, but I had my, my mom's best friend when I was growing up ratted me yeah. out for, for, for dating this one boy in town who wasn't necessarily like the most upstanding citizen. Yeah. I have to admit. <laughs> And she, like, came to my mom and was like, did you know that Nicole is blah, 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 blah. And I don't know how she got her information. But anyway, it's and a small then town. my mom, you know, came back to me and I had to break up with my boyfriend. It was so traumatic because I was like 16, right? Yeah. I had to break up with him because he was a bad influence. Oh, man. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I don't, so I have never forgiven that woman since. But looking back <laughs> as adult Nicole, was it a good thing that you got out of that? You know, I like to think that I would have Come gotten to there on your own. <laughs> I would have gotten there on my own. Exactly. I mean, we were totally like from two different worlds. Yes. And we were 16 and it was just whatever. It was just a fun dating kind of a thing. And Did the fact that he was kind of bad news make it more attractive for a little while? Well, of course. <laughs> That's, why I, that's why I dated them. Yeah. The hard thing for me is that like, there are things yeah. that if my kids did them, I would want to know. And I would want... Oh, for sure. If somebody else knew and didn't tell me, I would be unhappy. But I also don't want to hear it from that person because there's no way that you can deliver that information without sounding judgy. Or, yeah. you know, dear, I see that you haven't been paying attention, so let me tell you what's happening. <laughs> Right. Or I know that you've put your child in this dangerous situation, so let me tell you about it. There needs to be like an anonymous... Yeah, uh, a little tip it? line. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like on the back of a car. How's my driving? How's exactly. my parenting? Yes. <laughs> Just a number that you could call every now and then or a website you could go to, some little corner of the dark web where you could go on and find out things that people think you should know about your kid without knowing who said them. And would that you would ever go there? I would avoid that like the plague. <laughs> I would never, ever go there. Well, I mean, I have kids for whom spying has oftentimes been useful. Mm -hmm. You know, and but now that they're older, especially, I, I can't... I mean, I used to be able to talk to paraprofessionals confidentially. Yeah. Or, you know, educators would take pains to tell me things. But now they go into their workplaces and I have no idea. Yeah. And there maybe there are things I should know, but I don't want to hear it from anybody. <laughs> I don't yeah. have to look anybody in the eye and hear it. I don't want them to know I heard it. I would just like to just, you know, meet a deep throat in a parking garage somewhere and say, <laughs> Psst, somebody is taking advantage of your kid. So, uh, you yeah. Know. I mean, if it's yeah. something like that where they need your intervention. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, exactly. That's the situation I mean, I'm in a lot of the times. It's not just, just standard issue misbehavior. It's stuff that could right. be dangerous that they would not realize. If is, it's so. threatening their life, yes. Yeah. Please, tell me. I mean, like, like I'd want to know. Kids drinking, yeah, okay, if their parents don't know, their parent is, is tight about that and that's never mind. But, you know, I have a kid who that would be a very, very bad thing because right. of, right. you know, neurological conditions and family birth family background and stuff like that, I would need to know that. Yeah. That's yeah. not just a matter of, oh, his parents don't let him have any fun. It's like, this could be right. very, very bad. So yeah, there needs to be mm -hmm. some some non-judgmental, anonymous way to get that info. And then mm -hmm. follow up on it as you like. Right. <laughs> there needs to be like a parent... No, I don't want to say we tip. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there like some sort of so some sort of uh, thing that teenagers do where they can like what is that thing that they used to have where you could put something on for like a short duration of time and then it would disappear? Well, that's Snapchat, Snapchat right? Yeah, is that Snapchat? Yeah. Yeah. And they were using it for bad things, but you could use it for you know. Use it for good. <laughs> use it for good. <laughs> or use it for, you know, spying on your children or something like that. I don't know. Like, I just think if it's, threat, you know, like if it's threatening their life or if it's their, you know, something that I know that their parents would be. Well, just something that's going, you know. Okay. So, for example, <laughs> I don't know if I've told this story before or not, but my son had his friends over for uh, evening one, like back when I think they were 
17, I think. And they were outside and they were, you know, around the fire pit or whatever. We knew the friends. So it was fine. And then they came back inside. My husband and I were here at home. We're upstairs. And all of a sudden, um, my son comes up into the room. He's like, Mom, so-and-so just threw up all over the floor. And I'm like, oh, are they sick? And then my son's like, well, we had been, we, you know, we've been drinking. He's been drinking. <laughs> they brought some alcohol over oh. in their backpacks, which I didn't see. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and so I said, it, you know, wow, okay, that's not cool. So go downstairs. The kid is just like, you know, totally out of it, totally, completely drunk or whatever, right? So I called the parents and I said, come get your kid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not dealing with yeah. it because you know what? I didn't want him going to sleep here and then something bad happened, yeah. you know, like, and I didn't want to be responsible for him being so drunk that he was putting his, you know, he could harm himself yeah. or whatever. Right. But, um, but no, he did. He went and the parents were like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're here. And then the next morning, and we had cleaned up the mess. So I made, and I made my son clean it up, mm-hmm. right? Because uh-huh. I'm like, I'm not dealing with it. It's your friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> learn learn some of the glamorous parts of drinking, son. Right. Exactly, right? And then and then and then he also kn- knew that you know not to bring his drunk friend, not to have his drunk friends at home because he didn't want to be cleaning up their vomit. Yeah, <laughs> useful then, life um, lessons. <laughs> And then the next morning, the poor kid shows up at our house at like 9 a.m. with a roll of paper towel and disinfectant. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, honey, we, we didn't, didn't leave it there all leave night. leave it there for a whole night. <laughs> <laughs> but his parents made him come and apologize. Aww, and, well, that's good. That's good. So it was a good lesson. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it well, seems like in that case, it turned out kind of not what I'm not going to say yeah. well, but it turned out kind of helpful for everyone. Right. Right. Yeah. And so now my daughter, she tells the story to her friends when they come to sleep over. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they're like, don't, she's like, don't bring any alcohol, because if you do and get drunk and throw up, my mom's going to call your parents. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have to clean it up, and I'm not yes, doing that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so there's just no appeal to it, Yes. Right? No. <laughs> that is a good way of doing it. Works so, well. Anyway. Well, with yeah. that happy ending... <laughs> So last week we're talking about dogs throwing up. Throwing this up. week teenagers. Yep, and we we find a way to work it in. <laughs> but we'll stop now so that we don't have to yes. just run that risk anymore. That'll be it for today's right. round four. Tune in tomorrow when we'll share our roundabout roundup of things we've been using or enjoying lately that we think deserve a shout out. Find all our episodes at parentingroundabout.com and talk back in the comments there on our Facebook page or on Twitter where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat.